if we can ask the question scouted by angels or not is because um, uh, as Marie Lauren Claire just said when we arrived on this site and when we decided to start a new project on this site was because uh, we realized that uh, history had to be thickened uh, on this uh, on this site most people most most local people used to say that the site had been sculpted in just three days by the angels. <laughs> and researchers uh, said that the site had been made in just three years by uh, foreigners coming from Egypt at the time of King Lalibela. And even most researchers, even they, when they didn't believe in angels or foreign engineers, uh, considered that the whole site had been made at the time of King Lalibela, just, just within one reign. So, um, so the question, and we soon realized visiting the site with our different methodologies and different eyes and different abilities to see um, the landscape in different ways, we soon realized that there, were m that there was more to be said, there was more to be discovered at La Libella, and that is why we started this um, uh, uh, project. As uh, Claire and Marie just said, this is a site which is a site of pilgrimage, and um, because these people are Christians, and they, they travel to this site, and they also used in the past to travel to the Holy Lands and to um, uh, Jerusalem. This is, by the way, a very nice view of the sculpted nature of this church, which is sculpted underground. Okay? In that case, it is carved out from the ground and hollowed out from the inside okay? um, uh, to, to, to imitate um, a, a real built-up church. Okay? So this is not built, technically. There is, no, there is, not, there is no stone okay, piled up. This is just this is just sculpted. Uh, very very quickly, um, uh, when we started working on this site, uh, almost yeah more than ten years ago, we realized that there are on the site a number of architectural anomalies. Something wrong. There are many things wrong, and 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 if we were able to work carefully on these things wrong. We would, we would maybe be able to, 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 uh, to develop a new methodology. As you can see on this image, this is the church of Gabriel Raphael, dedicated to the archangels Gabriel Rufael and Raphael. And there are many things which are wrong, okay? And for instance, you have a, a flight of stairs here in the middle that is overhanging over the void, okay? That stairs leads to nowhere. And um, uh, presumably, there was a courtyard at the bottom of this stair, okay? But this courtyard is no longer there, except maybe the small relic that you can see on your right-hand side, okay? And, uh, but today, this relic, again, overhangs over the void and leads to nowhere. But at the bottom of this courtyard, okay, there is, you can see on the picture, there, is, there, are, there, there are water systems, which obviously were made after the courtyard was digged up, okay, dig down, okay? So from this, from this, from these and other anomalies on this facade, you can reconstruct a number of architectural operations that could only have taken place at some point in a relative chronology, okay, in a sequence. And from this, we, um, we decided to work out of this relative chronologies or sequence of things. But for this, we had to start a completely new um, uh, uh, chronology. First, from a uh, method, methodology. From this, we established um, um, a rough um, uh, uh, phasing of the site based on just a few observations made uh, on different churches at the site. And we divided and we found four phases. Okay? One which we called um, troglodytic. It's when people mm -hmm. arrived on the site and dug tiny tunnels round-shaped or pear-shaped tunnel or globular-shaped uh, tunnel just, just under the skin of the rock, okay? Uh, a second phase, which we called hypogeum phase, was then these people were able to connect um, the previous troglodytic um, tunnels and to change, the, and to change the, the shape of this tunnel to make them square instead of just round or globular, okay? A third phase we called monumental one, and this is the first time when people not only, not only dug underground, but opened uh, under the sky stru uh, structure, okay? So three-dimensional structures. Um, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the last phase we call Monumental II, when they start to overdig, when they started to overdig, okay, the, 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 the courtyards. 
By the way, this imply, uh, implies a very um, important thing. It means, it means something very important. It means that the most recent part of the site are the deepest. Okay? And the most ancient site, the part of the site, are the highest, which, which obliges us as archaeologists to think the other way around. Okay? And another uh, implication of this site is that it is non-depositional in, um, uh, in the sense that instead of having things being piled up on, on top of previous occupation, okay, this is people, that, the inhabitants of the site removed, okay, removed things, removed sediments, removed material. It is not entirely true, as Romain will show later, but still this is the main problem we had with this site, how to thicken history and how to do archaeology with, uh, at, at such a site and uh, in, in a non-conventional uh, con uh, way. For this, we developed a methodology consisting in, this is another church which is called, which is called um, Mercoreos, Get Mercoreos, um, uh, and we developed a new methodology based on a complete inventory of anomalies. So we had, we had to work with a multidisciplinary team, and, um, and um, that involves hundreds of hours of discussion on the site and out and after the site, and, uh, and after the, yeah, and, um, and uh, that's a very long process consisting in uh, describing and inventorying the anomalies to, f to document photographically the anomalies and to position them on the 3D scan. This is not published yet, okay. Um, uh, then this uh, entire uh, inventory and um, the documentation of the anomalies at the site enabled us to, to verify, to prove the, first, the, the, the four phases sequence that we initially hypothesized. And um, uh, we tested it in group one, okay, the, the Church of Mariam and Medane Alem, which you can see here. Again, uh, this is an illustration that this, the, the, this tiny, beautiful church is entirely carved out and hollowed out from the inside. And at this site, again, we could, we could demonstrate that the four phases were there. Okay, so, um, uh, so you have the section at the top and the, and the map um, and the plan uh, at the bottom of the, of the picture. So this is the troglodytic phase. This is the hypogeum phase. This is the monumental one phase. So for the first time, local people okay, opened structures. Okay, on the, uh, under the, under the, in the open air, under the sky. And Monumental 2, okay, involves huge works again with the digging of big trench. Okay, let me show you again the Monumental 1. Okay, you just have the church, the two churches, and the tunnel, okay, the, the Monumental tunnel entrance, uh, subterranean Monumental entrance that lead to the tiny church of Mariam, and then big trenches okay, were dug all around the site, and because these were monumental works, we called, we called this monumental too. That it belonged to two different phases it is very obvious from the fact that um, the, the digging of these uh, large trenches implied the cutting of previous structures, including very uh, highly invested, technically invested structure in the first monumental one phase. So now the question with these sequences in hand, these four phases in hand, was to try to uh, date uh, them. And thanks to a number of historical material, um, we were able to securely date the monumental one phase to the uh, early to mid 13th century. So that means that only that monumental one phase belonged to the time of King Lalibela, okay? And the other phases, either before or later, belong to different phases. Thanks to other historical material, we are also able to securely uh, date the monumental two phase to the 15th century and possibly later on, okay? 15th century to 16, maybe 17 or 18th century, but securely uh, some of the features of the second phase Second monumental phase belonged to the monument to the 15th century. What about the hypogeum and troglodytic? Well, <laughs> we're not sure. It was before. And, uh, the hypogeum phase may well uh, be attributed to sometime around the 12th century, 
and uh, we can see in some of these subterranean structures evidence that at some point it was transformed into churches. Okay, uh, at what time we are not sure. Uh, that that means that the late occupation or the late use of this of this hippodrome phase was maybe just before the Christianization of the, the building of, the, of the, the, the making of the, of the churches. And what about the troglodytic phase? Huh, that's very difficult to date, and we are not sure that was before. Um, now there is this question of, is La Libella an imitation of Jerusalem? Uh, 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 Claire and Marilor um, uh, uh, reminded us why we are asking this question, because obviously Matthewian pilgrims did the pilgrimage to the Holy Lands and Jerusalem and, come, and came back. And uh, so they, may, they might have had some knowledge about the, about the, about the site of um, Jerusalem. And actually, there are, there, are, there are good reasons to compare the two sites. If you see that, uh, that tomb, that Hellenistic tomb uh, in, on, the, on the top left hand side of the, of the picture, uh, this is a monolithic structure, okay? entirely freestanding, entirely carved out, out from the rock. And this is, and it, and it very, it's very reminiscent to us, to um, to the, the the thing which is called the tomb of Adam in La Libella here, okay, which is a freestanding mm -hmm. monument in the middle of a, you know, of a of a of a trench which is carved from the from the natural rock, okay, and also this this church of Saint George, which is also a freestanding. Monument. So these things, apart from the fact that they belong to different period and they are and they are stylistically different, okay, these are very reminiscent um, uh, monument. And again, here on the bottom left, you have this site which is considered uh, the tomb of Elena of Abadin, and this is a monument that was carved out of a facade um, in a, in a, in a quarry, which is itself dug inside the natural. And, uh, rock, and it is to us very reminiscent of the Church of Libanos on, on the, uh, at La Libella on the right hand side of the picture, which is exactly in the same topographic um, uh, position. Uh, this is the Jordan River on the left, and this is a rivulet in La Libella which is called the Jordanos. Okay, so there are many topographic uh, uh, and toponymic uh, evidence in La Libella that point to a, a, a legitimate comparison between the two sites and the intention of uh, the mm -hmm. people to imitate or commemorate um, the site, the, 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 the Christian site in the Holy Lands or in Jerusalem um, uh, itself. Can we go further than this? That's very difficult to say at this stage. It is for me, I'm almost done. It is for me the moment to introduce something, uh, which is that in the um, in the 15th century, there was in the 14th century, there was in Ethiopia after the Zagwe dynasty, another dynasty, um, which called, which is called the Solomonic, the Solomonic uh, dynasty, because it said it pretended to be descendant of Solomon and the queen of, and the queen of Sheba, and um, and this Solomonic dynasty, at the time of this Solomonic dynasty, a new political ideology took place um, in Ethiopia, whereby. And um, uh, Ethiopians um, uh, considered themselves not only the true Christians, but also the various Israel, the true Hebrews. And uh, being the true Hebrews and the true um, the Christians, they were invited sometimes around the 15th century to follow the Jewish Shabbat and the Christian Sundays. Okay, And this is called the double Sabbath. And this is what the Ethiopians still do. Um, uh, uh, today, and it is very strong in the political ideology of the Christian Ethiopians that the, there is this strong what we call uh, Solomonic ideal um, ideology. And maybe I, I, I just I want to finish with this and suggesting that maybe there is also uh, maybe there is a commemoration or imitation of Jerusalem in Lalibela, but maybe also a projection of this uh, Solomonic ideology in the rock. This is uh, on uh, the. Comp Complex one, you know, at uh, nearby, uh, nearby the church of Mari, uh, there are three underground uh, little churches. One is called Biet uh, de Blessinai, the church of Mount Sinai. Was it is called Biet uh, Golgotha, the church of the Holy um, uh, 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 Calvary. Sorry, not Sepulchre, Calvary, and the, and Biet uh, Selassie, the church of the Trinity. Uh, and you have the map here. 
on your on your left. The interesting thing, does it work? Yes, is that you enter here this way by a subterranean corridor, okay, and you entered here in the first church in the in the in the Mount Sinai church, and then you go into this church, okay, the Calvary, and then you go into this church, the the Trinity. Uh, in a way, it is very interesting because it is a recapitulation of the Solomon. It can be interpreted as a recapitulation of the Solomonic ideology in the sense that you are first to enter into Sinai, I mean, to, to become a member of the Old Covenant. And then you, are, you, can, you can go to the, to the Holy, to the Church of the Calvary, in the, typically the place of the New and, uh, Covenant. And then only from there you can go to the Trinity, which is the place of the real uh, Christians. So in a way, this is a topographic recapitulation of the Solomonic ideology of the Ethiopian Christians. Thank you very much. Just a few elements of bibliography.